Hey everybody, Evan here from Evans Detailing and Polishing, hanging out at the Renegade Compound. Today we're talking about general maintenance products for your lifted truck. Uh, here at Renegade, they've got a very robust line of products. Uh, all products I've personally tested and used in my shop, and I can physically stand behind all of these. Uh, first things we're going to talk about is working on your jacked up wheels. Um, we've got some really nice uh, forged wheels here. We've got a set of American Forces over here. We've got a special set of specialty forges over here. Uh, these are all the products I personally recommend for maintaining your lifted truck. Uh, if you're working on the aluminum on the wheels, this is our setup right here. Whether you're a novice or a pro, I'll break it down both ways. Uh, if you're just starting off, you're doing these on your own truck on the weekends, you don't really do a whole lot, uh, you're not making a business out of this, you're just kind of doing it on the weekends to maintain your wheels, uh, I recommend starting off with a 3500 RPM grinder. Uh, variable speed is the best. This model right here is a Dewalt uh, DWP 849X. In my shop, I use the Makitas. I find they got a little bit better torque. Uh, the model number on that Makita is a 9227C. Um, I like to run my cut at about uh, 3500 full speed and then my color at about 2200 RPM or less. Uh, once you start getting more established and more controlled with it and you feel like stepping up, the 6000 RPM, either Makita or DeWalt, is a great route to go. Uh, once you bump up to that 6000 RPM, you can build up the heat in the wheels a lot faster and get just a hair better finish in about half the time. The 6000 RPM grinder that we use in my shop is the Makita GA7021. Uh, the DeWalt also makes a 7 and a 9 inch at 6000 RPM. I'm not too familiar with the model number on those, but those will work as well. The Makita is a little lighter, so you won't be so tired by the end of the day if you're making a business out of this. But right now, what I'm going to break down is the actual products. Uh, we'll start with a cut. This here is a yellow mill treat. Uh, we'll use a brown compound with it. It'll do all the heavy lifting, it'll smooth everything out, it'll get that nice sheen finish that we want. And then when we get down with the yellow and brown, we're going to switch out to a white flannel with a green compound. Uh, some guys like to use blue, I in my shop like to use the green. The green leaves that dark rich chrome shine that everybody's looking for, especially in this lifted truck market. A lot of guys, even though the wheels are just billet aluminum, a lot of them want them to still look like chrome. So we actually use the white flannel with the green compound to finish and I always finish with a variable speed grinder. As I've said in previous videos, the white does not like 6,000 RPM. The fabric's too soft for these clinch rings and it likes to pull them apart. These are like little shark's teeth in here. And as always, use some kind of safety flange, whether it's the insertables or just the black safety flanges. Safety's always a priority. Um, if you're just a weekend warrior and you're not doing this every day, uh, you won't need a full face respirator. But I do recommend at least some kind of dust mask and some kind of eye protection, whether it's safety glasses or whatever. Uh, the stuff you're working on really does tear up your insides pretty bad. So just make sure that you're protecting yourself. If you're making a business out of this, invest in a good full face respirator. A good full face respirator is going to protect your eyes and your respiratory system and just a great all around system for maintaining your health. Now, when we get into washing um, and detailing, I like to use the Money Shot Wash and Wax. Uh, really works great in a foam cannon but also works in a bucket. Uh, two to three ounces of this in a bucket will actually be able to wash a whole truck. Uh, in a foam cannon, same thing, two to three ounces, mix in some water and you can run your foam cannon right through. Uh, when you start getting into your heavier dirts and grits, uh, you can actually put more than two to three ounces in. Two to three ounces is recommended for your general maintenance stuff. Uh, once you're done with that, um, if you want to clean up your heavy areas, let's say you're getting into mud, you're getting into grease, you're running through heavy sand, uh, the all-purpose cleaner is a great way to clean your wheel wells and stuff before you wash. It'll also help loosen that grease in your ball joints and all the nooks and crannies that you just kind of get excess dirt into. But then once you wash, we'll start going into our rubbers and vinyls and our spray waxes. Uh, rubber and vinyl is a great product. It's anti-static. Um, it works great on your tires. It won't mess up your forged wheels. If you do get some overspray on your forged wheels, it's just a simple wipe off with microfiber and you're just leaving a nice finish. It's not going to leave a haze from, the, from your rubber and vinyl. A lot of spray, spray shines for your tires will leave a haze on your wheels. This stuff will not. We've used it on even our big show truck semis and have never had an issue. Uh, the rubber and vinyl will also work on your interiors uh, and you can use it on any of your rubber boots, on your CV joints, any of that stuff. You can use it on all your rubber boots. 
Uh, the spray wax is a great maintenance product for whether you're at the shows all the time or just something where you don't need a real heavy wax, you just want to maintain in between waxes. Uh, the spray wax is also anti-static, so if you're working at a show for the weekend or you're just going to be posted up at a, a sandy, dirty show for the weekend, spray that stuff on. It's going to help release the dust and dirt so much easier that next morning when you come in. You don't have to worry about pollen sticking to it or the dust sticking to it. Uh, for maintaining your forged wheels, um, we recommend just the Rebel Red. Uh, I use this stuff all the time in my shop. Uh, once you've high speed cut everything and you want to just maintain it in between high speed cuts or just not have to high speed cut so often, the Rebel Red, the standard Rebel Red will do a really good job just maintaining it. Um, I actually apply it with the wax applicator pad. I find we have a lot less wasted product when you use the wax applicator pad. Um, when you're using towels and stuff, it tends to soak into the towel and you just seem to be wasting a lot of product. These wax applicator pads are really nice. And then when I, when I go to take it off, I use a cotton terry cloth towel. I know a lot of you guys out there use microfibers, but uh, I've made a video before about this and I'll say it again. The active ingredient in the Rebel Red or most hand polishes is a finely crushed glass. As soon as you put that on your wheels, if you're wiping it off with microfiber, it tends to bunch up in the fabric. And when it bunches up in the fabric, it kind of creates like little shards of glass. And it'll leave real fine scratches. I know cotton terry cloth looks like it would leave more scratches, but the hand polish actually doesn't get a chance to bunch up in the actual fabric. So it doesn't leave those fine scratches. Always remember, use a good quality cotton terry cloth towel to remove your hand polish and you won't have those hazing and scratching issues.